Stacey Milner is the founder and CEO of the HBCU in LA program, the premier internship program of the entertainment industry college outreach program. This program is designed to meet the industry's need and desire to educate, recruit, and develop a culturally and ethnically diverse workforce. She is also the founder and CEO of Executive Temps, a premier employment agency that has served the entertainment industry for over 30 years. Stacy, how are you today? I'm wonderful. Thank you. Thank yeah, you thanks, for, thanks for joining me again. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So tell, tell my audience a little bit about yourself before we get into all the, all the businesses that you have. Wonderful. Well, uh, I'm a veteran, first of all, of the entertainment industry, having served as the executive assistant to the chairmen of NBC and Paramount, um, worked for, as I mentioned, 17 years and then ended up forming a staffing agency called Executive Temps and uh, been staffing now for over 30 years. And the major studios and networks are primarily our clients. But it was um, my time of really just working in the industry that, um, you know, allowed me to become and do all these other things that I'm doing today, because then I realized that, you know, not only were people of color not in this industry, but the agency was starting to bring folks in. And so then obviously clients then would reach out and say things like, hey, we can't find the diverse talent and, you know. The rest is history because then I did a book tour and ended up at HBCU campuses and saw the disconnect and said, well, if the industry is going to change anything in this industry, they have to start with the best and brightest from our nation's HBCUs. And then HBCU in LA was born and, and here we are today. Okay. So now is it is it HBCU in LA program or is it the, the other title, the EICOP? Which one so is it? The Entertainment Industry College Outreach Program is the nonprofit organization. Our signature program is HBCU in LA. Okay, so most folks know it by HBCU in LA. HBCU in LA, yeah, it has all the, yeah, everybody's very much know HBCU in LA. So ECOP is, is just the, it's like the parent company, right? Okay, okay, cool. So tell me about this book. You mentioned a book that, that you, I assume you wrote it. Tell me about the book. Yeah. So I wrote a book um, called Leveraging Up, the key to launching your entertainment career. And at the time, um, I come home from working at Paramount, ended up joining my husband in our staffing agency and realized that there was a new generation that was coming into this business and they had no idea what it took to get in this Hollywood inner circle. And so I said, well, I'm just going to write a book about, you know, really essentially working a desk in Hollywood. You need to get alongside the power players that have the potential to leverage your career. And so I ended up writing this book and went on a national book tour to colleges and universities across the country. But it wasn't until I got to HBCUs that I saw that disconnect. Um, but the book, uh, I mean, covers everything from the business behind the business to, you know, all the nuances of what it takes to really work in this industry. And as a result of doing that book tour and then coming back and pitching to the industry about this you know, outreach program that I wanted to do to bring an educational career forum to the campuses of HBCUs that um, I ended up, you know, President Obama's team reached out and not every day that you get a call from the executive office of the president, right? Okay. And so um, they're like, you know, we heard what you're doing. How can we help expand you to our stakeholders, help you reach more of the HBCUs? I invited them to Hollywood and then we started this uh, program, but it all started as a result of just wanting to help the next generation understand, you know, what it took to get into this industry and how it works, because this is an apprenticeship business. If you don't get in, you know, in those mail rooms or working as an assistant, PA somewhere, doing something in those support roles, it's really hard to crack the nut because this industry, I don't care what your degree is, what school you come from, everybody starts at the same place. Yeah, they... <laughs> <laughs> they do. For the most part, they do. What I found interesting when I spoke to you before is that you you mentioned that you did not go to college. Could you tell the audience that, that story about you not going to college? Yeah. Um, you know, my family had family here in California, came here on vacation. And my cousin worked at NBC at the time. She was a page giving tours behind the scenes and I could actually go to work with her. And uh, I was like, man, like, this is cool. Like, this is a job. And so I go back to Ohio and I'm graduating from high school and my, my aunt would often come on government business. And so she came and I was like, you know what, I'm going back with you. And she said, 
I'll believe that when you're on the plane next to me. And I said, well, you know, I want to go to college. And she said, well, you come live with us, you gain residency and you can go to school. So I was like, okay, well, when I got to California, my cousin now has, is working in the newsroom at NBC. She gets me an interview with the people that run the page program. They interview me, offer me the job. I'm in. And from there, you know, you get like, I think at the time it was 14 months uh, in order to kind of be in there, you know, you get to work in different departments, so forth. But your goal is to get a job, you know, now that you're in that circle. And um, so lo and behold, there was a job opportunity open to assist the movie of the week director, a guy by the name of Hamilton Cloud. And uh, he interviewed me, gave me the job before I knew it, you know, I was five years in and now I'm working as, as he moved up, I moved up, then he left. And then I ended up with uh, Brandon Tartikoff. So, um, and then here I am, right? Uh, I look back and I was like, well, what am I gonna go to school for? I'm, I'm kind of learning on the job. Um, so that's, that's really where that comes from. And so whenever I'm on campus speaking and students will say to me like, you know, what courses were most beneficial to you? And I'll have to say, I never went to college. Right. And you hear that gas in the room. <laughs> but, you know, I, in, in, the, in today's times, you can't quite do that anymore. Um, I mean, you can, but it's tough. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a, it's a really interesting conversation um, because I know you you earlier said you know it's a hard nut to crack, but then when you tell this story, it just sounds so simple. <laughs> right? You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. well, which one is it? Is it a hard nut to crack, or is it is it really simple? And the the thing about it is, is I, I think once I well, I remember when I got in the, in the business and started out as an intern, uh, at some point you come to this realization. I didn't need to go to college to do this. So, you know. I mean, hey, the all these jobs are so entry level when you come in. Like you can do this, these jobs, you know, outside of not knowing players and knowing, you know, how the business works. But I mean, for the most part, it doesn't take rocket science to come in and do this. You right. need to be a people person, be able to listen, be able to apply yourself, you know, and that's what it takes. So, but it is still hard because this is an apprenticeship business. It's a very insular business, right? And so you have to know somebody. And so what I say through this program and this work that I'm doing is I'm your inside in. I want to be the person that gives you that that's that bridge that allows you to get into this into this space. And until we do this, it wasn't going to change. We we're going to be talking about diversity and lack thereof for a long time because you're doing things with apprenticeship programs like a writer's program or a director's program, so forth, so on. But those are like lotteries, right? How many people actually are going to infiltrate the industry with those systems? They're not. So why don't we do the same thing that the industry has done for years, which is invest in institutions of higher learning to make sure that they're pulling the best and brightest. So if you keep going to the same types of upper level film schools, mm -hmm. you're pulling in the same type of employee workforce, right. you're never gonna change it. So what I wanted to do was say, hey, HBCUs have been producing leaders and visionaries with 150 year history. Why aren't we tapping talent from those institutions? And why are we only looking at those that are majoring in film, right? Why aren't we looking at those that are majoring in law? They're over in the business school. You know, we've got, we've got an infrastructure to support that can really infiltrate what the workforce of this industry looks like. That's where the change is gonna come from. Yes, yes, I, I totally agree 100%. And I was thinking, I think what one good thing that your program uh, does is it creates proximity. And so it gives uh, uh, young people an opportunity to be closer to uh, these opportunities than they wouldn't normally have, particularly if they uh, come from outside of LA, outside of New York and outside of Atlanta. If they're in this program, now they have more proximity and more exposure um, to these opportunities. So exactly. it, it's, it's an excellent, excellent program. And I think I mentioned to you before that I, I wish it was available uh, when I was coming out of school. Uh, not that I would have been invited, but, but that's another story. But anyway, <laughs> I'm sure you probably would have. <laughs> <laughs> so tell, so tell uh, our audience a little bit, you know, about the program in LA and uh, the, the, the ABCs of it and, and how it works. How, how, how can a kid 
get involved in this program? Yeah. Well, first of all, we um, this we are going to be going into our seventh year of doing this program. Uh, we launched the program in 2017. So after you know inviting the White House team here and telling the industry about we wanted to, what we wanted to do, um, explaining to them the work that I had laid by being boots on the ground, and then obviously the president's team coming in. Why don't we? remove the barriers. So what we are essentially doing with this program is removing all the barriers. Geographically, HBCUs are not in the industry's backyard, right? They're not sitting in New York. They're not sitting here in LA. Um, and then you've got typically first-generation college students coming from low-income households. So even if you offer them an internship, how are they going to afford to live in LA on an intern salary for a summer. Mm -hmm. So what this program does is that we said, okay, we're going to go and we're going to recruit students across all majors, um, obviously related, you know, majors, um, and allow them to apply for the program. On average, we have about 2000 students that apply. Um, we have only 50 slots to fill because we've mm -hmm. got to cover housing. Mm -hmm. um, and so people say, why don't you do more? We get more dollars we can house more students, right? Mm -hmm. um, but on average, about 50. So it's very competitive. Um, and I mean, these students are, you know, when they show up on paper, and even for lower classmen, um, and I, they what they have been doing is impressive. So, you know, we, we get the cream of the crop. We really do. And so I'm really happy about that. But anyway, they apply. Um, we will select 50 to come to LA, provide them with housing. They don't have to pay anything to live here. Uh, we have a great housing partnership with Emerson College, which is based in Boston, but they have a satellite campus here in LA, uh, which is another thing that I really want to do is to create an HBCU semester-based program. Um, hmm. That's a whole nother thing. But anyway, stay, stay focused here, Stacey. Um, <laughs> so at any rate, we house them. Um, we provide for them programmatic elements. It is a total immersion experience. So they are working in the industry with a major studio network, talent agency, production companies, uh, PR firms, mm -hmm. you name it, they're working. Some of the unions, SAG-AFTRA has hosted students. Um, IATSE, Local 600 has hosted students and, and sponsored students for cin cinematography. Um, so it's really across the board what we do, but we cover everything. And then our industry partners pay them while they're here. So you're living here on our dime. You're getting paid for an internship. You're building marketable skills to make you ready to launch into this industry. And so every Thursday, we do something that we call our speaker series. So we have students that are hearing from industry professionals and icons and big industry organizations that are coming in to pour into these students every Thursday so that we give them the tools that they need and the support that they need to be able to really think about how they're gonna navigate their career. Uh, we also do a film project. So over my shoulder here is our inaugural student short film. Um, the students get a chance to actually pitch an idea um, to a real writer's room. We take one pen to paper and then we actually go into physical production. Um, they go from everything from pre to production to post. Um, and so, you know, we give them everything that we can to make it a real world experience about what this industry is because the program typically is hosting students for those corporate um, internship opportunities. Production is unionized, so we can't put them physically on production but then we do our own student collaborative film project. But that's what we're doing. Um, and we are seeing such tremendous results. So we, the biggest feather in our cap is that we have a 90% conversion rate from intern to hire. So nice. these companies are not just checking a box and hosting them. We're helping, we're holding their hand to the fire to say, hey, you've invested in this talent. If all things align and there's a job opportunity, let's figure out how to get them a job offer. Mm, that's nice. Nice. And you said 90% conversion rate. 90%. So that's nine. Not every nine, out of 10 kids, nine kids get hired. Yep. That's dynamite. Yeah. So they accept, so at that point, uh, that kid from Arkansas or wherever he's coming from has to, now he's on his dime. He got to get to LA on his dime. Right. Yeah. Right. And usually it's the students that are the seniors 
that, and we'll allow students to actually be a part of this program up to six months post-graduation. So all the students that are graduating in May, mm -hmm. they will come to LA the end of May. Mm -hmm. And so they're hoping that their internship converts, right? right? Exactly. Because they're yeah. already there, yeah. yeah. And so they're already there. And so right. what happens because they're here, there's another group of, of seniors that are here that, that will get job offers. They come together and figure out how to become roommates right. so that they can stay in LA right. and, and, and launch their career. Oh, that's great. That is, that's a tremendous, tremendous opportunity. So you, you said seven years uh, and 50 applicants. So that's what, uh, 350 uh, graduates. Don't, I don't do math well. So yeah, <laughs> that sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> 350 graduates in, in the entertainment industry. And do they, I'm sure they keep in touch with you, send you emails, do you, right? Do you yep. see them from time to time? Oh yeah. I mean, all of them stay in touch with me. There are, I am known as Mama Stacy, and my okay. husband is known as Papa Ted throughout the summer. Okay. So we stay in touch with these kids. Um, even when they go back to school, we're helping them to land opportunities like for fall, remote internship opportunities. Um, they talk to us if they're about to negotiate for a new job going up. So yes, we stay in touch through and post. Um, so they have that support um, for us forever. That's what they say. They're always, we're always there for them. Have, you, have any of them, and I'm sure they have, but have any of them become executives at this point? Um, not yet. Um, we don't have executives, but we have, um, we have a couple that are like, kind of that junior level. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've got a young man that I'm thinking of who um, has already sold for a production company, like their first, you know, his first project. Okay. Um, and as I get a phone call, it's like, I just sold like something for the company. And I was like, oh my God. So, but like, that's what's happening. Um, so yeah. They, they, they're doing amazing work. And so uh, I, I, the future is bright. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds really, really exciting. What is the ratio of, of uh, men to women in the program? Oh, we have so many more ladies. We'd mm -hmm. like to have more men. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to say it's probably like 70, 30. Okay. And, and why do you think that is? Is that, is that based off of the applications you receive? Uh, why, why do you think that is? Well, it's based off the applications that we receive and then those that we have in the program. Predominantly, there are more women in this program than there are males. Um, I think we had one year where it was 50-50, mm -hmm. uh, which was really great. Um, but I, I don't really know. I don't think I have an answer for why that is. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, I kind of liken it to my own children. <laughs> mm -hmm. So my daughter knew exactly what she wanted to do, where she mm -hmm. wanted to go to school, the grades she knew she had to have. Whereas mm -hmm. my son was kind of more come see, come saw, kind of like think this is going to work, you know. So I, I really don't know really what yeah. it is. But I think that what we are doing is getting the attention of the young men. Mm -hmm. um, so we're seeing a lot more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, so it sounds like a really exciting program. It also sounds very competitive um as well and hopefully it's not too competitive within the within the 50 you know hopefully that they are uh coming together so sort of as a summer family and oh. um you know accomplishing goals together hopefully I, and that's what i would like to see but I, I do understand that you know this business can be you know some people come come out the womb that way they're just really competitive <laughs> but um, you know i will say that i think the secret sauce that we have is that we we are creating a family Mm -hmm. um, and a community, uh, yeah. which is when they come here, a lot of times they haven't even interacted with other students outside of their own HBCU. So they come together, they're living in the same place. Right. We have facilities where they cook together every night. I mean, right. this is like, they are supporting each other, which is why I think we're having such tremendous success because the students are supporting each other, regardless of where they may be in an internship, they're relying on each other for resources and information. Mm -hmm. So now where do you see, uh, how do you foresee the future for HBCU in LA? Oh what, do you see, what do you see happening? What would you like to see uh, come to fruition? Well, you know, um, obviously I wanna have more. My, my goal is to have a hundred plus students converging on LA every summer. Mm -hmm. um, and now we have sites to expand this program into New York. We're gonna expand it into places like Atlanta, so we want to now start expanding geographically into some of the other industry's key hubs. 
Um, and so I think we've got that, but then we're also moving into the technology space around gaming and, you know, all the other things within that sphere, that convergence that's happening between industry and, and, and tech. Um, so, you know, sky's the limit, but just more students affected. And then hopefully having an actual, you know, semester program. I want to be able to have students just like NYU and all these other top film schools. They have a satellite here in LA. Why don't we do that for the HBCU community? Allow any student from an HBCU to apply to be a part of one of the semester programs. Come right here to the heart of where everything happens. Get education and training and intern at the same time. We will populate into this industry in a huge way. One thought that came to my mind just, just now was that since you do spread it across uh, various di different disciplines, that also makes it even more competitive. Um, and, and now, so if I'm at, let's say I'm at, uh, I don't know, Morgan State, and uh, where would I come across the HBCU and LA program? Where would I see that at? Um, well, you know, word of mouth is the, is a wonderful thing, right? Yep. So the That's way what I'm doing, have, That's what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. The way we have built this has been very grassroots. Um, I, since 2010, I have been visiting the campuses of HBCU. So a lot of the schools know about it. We're on social media. We've got, you know, now that we have, you know, I don't know, six years, 2000 plus. I mean, think about how many students and people hear about it. They are sharing it with their friends. Mm -hmm. We're engaging with professors to make mm -hmm. sure that they have information. So we're putting information out into the community where they know that, okay, applications are open. This is what's happening with this program. And then we're doing different types of activations as well with like different industry partners. Like we went on the road with Harriet and Just Mercy, and we brought, you know, panels and screenings to the actual school. So the word is out there in the community um, and then through social media. That's how they find us. Okay, great. And and so what does that application look like uh, for that prospective student? What's that application look like? So the application requires them to have, um, they've got to have a personal statement. Uh, we need to know why they want to be a part of this program. How does, how does it align with their professional goals? Um, they need to have two letters of recommendation, one from academia, one from another you know, somebody else who can speak to them professionally. Mm -hmm. um, and then we require them to uh, have a stellar resume. Your resume needs to reflect what it is you say you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. You can tell me I want to be a writer all day long, but if I don't see anything in your resume that reflects that you've been involved on campus producing, writing anything, mm -hmm. you know, it, does, it doesn't align. So uh, we also ask that students have a 3.0 GPA. Mm -hmm. um, we want to bring those that, you know, are ready to be committed to, um, you know, to their craft, but also to their community and also being responsible to make sure that they're taking care of their responsibilities. Okay. All right, Dynamite. That sounds that sounds great. Um, well, I don't have any more questions. What is there anything, any parting words you want to give the audience? You want to give them your website where they can find you? Yes. So I will say this one thing and remind me to tell you the website. Uh, one of the things that we are doing right now is we are launching our Emerging Talent Network. It is an a online mentorship program. So it allows all of our finalists and HBCU, you know, folks that we're going to put into this system is basically HBCU and LA meets LinkedIn with a lot more bells and whistles. So we're, we're going to be launching that. And so we're looking for mentors. We're going to put our 200 plus finalists on that platform. They'll have a profile. And then we want to get 400 industry professionals and leaders to actually come on and have a uh, a profile on that so that the computer can do what it does through its algorithms to properly match them to the right type of mentor. Um, so that's coming up and that's um, e -E uh, etn.ecop.org. Okay. So that's that coming up. But in order to get to us, it is EICOP. We like a lot of E's. You can see that. <laughs> EICOP.org. Um, and then for social media, it's HBCU in LA. HBCU in LA on Facebook, on Instagram as well. On Instagram, yep. All the social. Even our even on LinkedIn, we have a, a group um, on LinkedIn for HBCU in LA. 
Okay, great, great, great. Yeah. Well, it's great speaking with you, Stacy. You're doing a phenomenal job. We appreciate you and all the work you're doing. Keep it up. Thank you. I'm helping our kids. They Absolutely. need, you know, they they they've bitten the they they've gone out there. They've got their education. Now let's put them in a pathway to get jobs. It's, I, I think a mind is a terrible thing to waste, but I think an educated mind is even a more terrible thing to waste. I agree. I agree. Thank you. All right. Take care. All right. You too.